Hi, my name is Sophie St. George and I work at Green Bank Observatory. Today, I'm really excited to share this activity that you can do at home called Green Bank Telescope Engineering Design Challenge. And we are doing this activity to celebrate the 20th anniversary of our premier telescope, the Green Bank Telescope. Construction was complete in 2000, August 25th. And it took about 10 years to build something this large. It is nicknamed the GBT. And this telescope not only is tall and heavy, but it also has served as a very versatile instrument for the scientific community. It helps us to see black holes and look into stellar nurseries. It also has discovered many chemicals and uh, is very important for astronomy. So we mentioned it was tall. It's actually taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. When that was built, it was about 481 feet tall, and our telescope is 485. Now that, that tele or the pyramid has shrunk, but our telescope has remained the same height. Uh, and you can see on the border here, there are 51 blue whales. And that is how many blue whales weigh about 17 million pounds, just like the Green Bank Telescope. What's even uh, more incredible is that this telescope can move 360 degrees in less than 10 minutes. That is really fast for something this large. When the observatory called for engineers to propose ideas for how they wanted to build this thing, they knew a few different elements would select the engineering company that they went with eventually. So the observatory knew they needed a big dish. They needed it to be tall in order to see more of the sky. They knew that it had to support its weight. We had just been through a devastating event where the 300 foot telescope at the time that was the most used telescope on site collapsed and no one wanted this to happen anytime soon. So it had to support its weight and that height. And we also uh, put in a stipulation, right, to have it be low cost. So the person who could build the biggest dish with a reasonable cost and in our time frame that we wanted uh, would be selected to actually build the telescope. So engineers couldn't just promise that they would do all of these things. They had to show their work. And they showed their work through prototyping as well as establishing a budget or a cost that they were going to limit their supplies to. And your challenge is very similar. So you will have a time limit. You have to build this within 60 minutes from your start to the stop. And your structure has to be tall. It has to be at least 10 inches. And we measure this from the table to the bottom of your dish, which we'll talk about what that is later. Um, but just be consistent in your measurement. Uh, don't me don't uh, build a tiny thing of spaghetti that goes all the way up to the top that actually isn't part of the structure. We want it to hold at least a quarter cup of rice to show that it can bear weight. And you have to make sure it doesn't cost more than $4,000. So let's get into that. So here I have a list of the materials we use in our science center when we're open. And a lot of these you may already have at home. Things like toothpicks for baking or spaghetti, those are pretty easy to find um, at home. And if you don't have them at home, they're easy to get at the store. Marshmallows, I have some left over from winter because I love marshmallows in my hot cocoa. You may as well. And then uh, we also have gumdrops here, but if you don't have gumdrops or spice drops, you can find some candy that works really similar um, or even make some, some Play-Doh. Uh, the knife here is a plastic knife and then a dish. I'm going to be using a plastic bowl, but there's a few other options you have. So if you have these materials, that's great. If not, candies like dots 
or sour octopus, uh, the centers of those work really well. I haven't tried Play-Doh, but you can make it at home, so that's nice. And you can also buy that at the store. And then if you don't have spaghetti or toothpicks, you might be able to source some pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. And I haven't tried this, so I'm really excited to see what, uh, what your designs look like and how well those uh, hold their own weight up. So you can use a disposable dish like paper or plastic or styrofoam. And if you don't have any of those, uh, maybe try a coffee filter. And if you don't have any of those, here's a video and we'll link it in the description for how you can make your own paper tray. And you can use scrap paper or newspaper for that. You'll notice that all of these items have a cost. So this is where we're talking about our budget or what we want to stay under. So toothpicks, um, let me see here. Toothpicks, you get 16 of them for $100. Gumdrops, one is $50. And marshmallows, you get two for $50. Now with these, we normally use $100 bills, and so you have to buy two gumdrops to equal 100, because there's no change back. Or with marshmallows, you buy four of them um, to have 100. You can also buy two marshmallows and one gumdrop to equal 100. But if you have Monopoly money, just use the $100 bills. If you don't have Monopoly money or any other game that has fake money, you can print or make your own um, you can also just keep track with a whiteboard or, um, or a piece of paper. So write down what you spend and then make sure that you haven't gone over budget by the end. The knife, we use a plastic knife. Um, you can use that to cut your gumdrops or cut your marshmallows. If you don't mind getting sticky, uh, you can just pull those apart. But the knife does make it um, so that you can cut more equal pieces. Same thing with spaghetti. You get 10 pieces uh, for $100, but you can break those 10 pieces into five, uh, excuse me, um, into 20 smaller pieces if you want. You break them in half. Uh, you can also break your toothpicks. You can break everything if you want to. Um, know that toothpicks are generally two inches long and spaghetti are 10 inches long. So if you're thinking about your height requirement, uh, you might just think to go tall with spaghetti or tall with uh, five levels of toothpicks. Let me think. There's nothing I don't think I'm forgetting here. You'll see that there's two columns for a prototype structure, a uh, prototype and your structure. So we'll talk about what this prototype means, um, but you can add up the cost of materials in this little chart. You can draw that at home and make your own. So let me move myself and you can see this was an actual prototype of the Green Bank Telescope. Now, this doesn't look nearly as strong as the actual telescope and we're really grateful for that. So this uh, prototype gave us an idea of what it would look like, but it wasn't the final design. And that's really important to keep in mind is draw out, plan ahead what you want your design to look like, but know that you don't have to stick to that exact design. And if you've watched any shows like uh, baking shows or the flower fight on Netflix, you'll know that the teams that plan ahead really do a lot better because uh, they're able to accomplish that vision faster. If you just start without knowing what you're really gonna do, you're gonna waste a lot of time. So take 10, 15 minutes to think about what shapes you wanna use and what your design should look like. Remember that uh, your dish, here I've got my bowl, will sit on top of your structure. So you want that to be flat or level and uh, you want it to be able to support that bowl just on its own. So, you can use those 10 to 15 minutes to think about uh, real world structures that are tall and, and heavy and think about what uh, shapes they use. And then you can experiment by uh, 
um, actually building it using the next 45 to 50 minutes building. Now I've got here, you can't make a sinking ship sail. And what that means is as you're building, you may notice things are falling or squishing. It may be only be two inches tall and it can't hold its weight up. So don't think, don't convince yourself that if you just keep building it the way that you're doing it, it will, uh, it will stand up eventually. Address those problems that you see. Maybe your design is falling over. So what can you do to, to make sure it's more stable and it can support itself better? Maybe your design is taking too long to build. Address that. Think about how maybe you could simplify it um, and try not, to, um, uh, try not to just give up. Just think about what's going wrong here and what do I know that I could do that might fix that. And leaning it up against a wall doesn't count. So make your structure stand tall. So I'm going to pause here um, and show you a few shapes that I have. Um, so I use marshmallows and they're quite old. Like I said, they're from Christmas um, or winter and uh, they're very sticky. So I definitely had a wet wipe nearby to, to make sure I didn't get my computer sticky or anything like that. Um, but you can see this is a, a triangle with spaghetti uh, and three marshmallows. And it looks really similar to the one with three toothpicks. Only I only use one stick of spaghetti. So this was more uh, cost effective. This was cheaper, but it accomplished the same thing. And if I try to kind of squeeze on these, and see if they can support a little weight. Uh, they do pretty well. The spaghetti though, um, did come out of that marshmallow and maybe I just need to put it back in, but maybe I like how this one works. So, oh, but only two more squishes and it did the same thing. So they're pretty comparable, they're pretty similar. Um, and this is what prototyping can look like, building a shape and squeezing it and seeing if it, um, it can be squeezed. We also have um, some different shapes like a, a square. And so I might squeeze that on both sides and that looks pretty good. I get poked by the toothpicks. But if I hold the square, um, we can see it starts to become less of a square. These things sort of squeeze together. So I noticed that in my prototyping. And I thought, well, maybe I can keep that adding another piece of spaghetti. And that's true. But these things want to fold together. And so um, what could I do to stop that from happening? So this doesn't squeeze or twist anymore, but it's making these things twist more. So what could I do? Like I said, um, this was four uh, plus three, seven total uh, toothpicks um, of my 16. So that's pretty good. I, I, still have, uh, I still have eight more, um, but I have 10 spaghetti and I've only used two to make these shapes. So think about uh, that cost as well. And I didn't have gummies at home, so I just used the marshmallows. But try what the gummies, uh, try, try the gummies at home. Okay. Finally, we want you to post your structures. We want to see what these look like. And uh, so you can post a picture of your structure before and after testing it. You could post a video of you actually testing it. And for us to find these, make sure that you use a hashtag GBT design challenge, as well as tag our handle Green Bank Observatory in your pictures and videos. You can also just comment them below this video. And don't forget, your structure is going to be pushed to its limits. You want to test it until it fails, but it could fail at any point and you don't want your, um, your kitchen or wherever you're doing this to end up looking like a whole rice spill 
or in real life, this looked like a collapsed telescope. This is the 300 foot telescope that collapsed and inspired the construction of the new Green Bank Telescope. So ask anybody in your house, uh, not a pet, but any person in your house um, to put their hands underneath opposite edges of your dish and make sure they hover underneath and they're not supporting it. So uh, another thing I want to just demo here is that I've got this measuring cup with a quarter cup of rice. I'm gonna have this bowl sitting on top of my structure. Let me just use my water glass for now. And if you like my shirt, you can get that at the gift shop. It's got Green Bank Telescope on it. But your bowl will sit on your structure just like this and you're gonna pour the rice in and see if it holds that. And then fill it up with another quarter cup of rice and pour that in and see how many quarter cups it holds. If you're into math and adding up fractions, you can um, even add up how many total cups it holds. Uh, if you do not have a, any plastic bowl or things like that, we talked about coffee filters. I also found that this uh, fruit container would work really well. So I have that left over and you may have some fruit containers um, in your home as well. So that's our challenge to you. And as, uh, as you pour that rice in, again, someone's just gonna hover their hands right underneath the bowl so that if it tips off to the side, they can catch it. And we hope you have a great time uh, doing this. If you need any uh, reminders, you can find uh, this activity in the description. Thanks very much.